Welcome to Earth, where AI papers drop like diss tracks. Microsoft Research just dropped their new paper, Orca Progressive Learning from Complex Explanation Traces of GPT-4. It's a paper on how to make open source models just as powerful as the big sharks like GPT-4, which seems like a conflict of interest seeing as though OpenAI and Microsoft are on the same team of this AI war. This is probably the craziest paper release yet. And we're going to get into the three most groundbreaking advancements from Orca on this episode of AI Focus. But before we can fully understand why this paper is groundbreaking, I have to quickly mention this paper, The False Promise of Imitating Proprietary LLMs. This paper stated that smaller open source models are merely imitating outputs of larger models and have no clue about the logic behind these outputs. A lot of these models are fine-tuned versions of larger LLMs. This occurs in a process called instruction tuning, where a series of prompts and responses are passed to the open source model for it to learn from. The paper says that this makes the open source models good at pattern matching, but if something in the pattern switches up, the model becomes pretty much useless. Larger foundational models, on the other hand, can reason and break down problems until a solution is found. Open source models are just the cheap imitations of them, unless Orca has something to say about it, which it does. The Orca paper argues that this couldn't be further from the truth, and it has the accolades to prove it, beating ChatGPT on multiple benchmarks and literally destroying every other open source model in existence. It's like, did those other guys even try? Right off the bat, Orca addresses this imitation learning concept by saying, recent research has focused on enhancing the capability of smaller models through imitation learning drawing on the outputs generated by large foundational models, or LFMs. These models learn to imitate the style but not the reasoning process of LFMs. To address these challenges, we develop ORCA, a 13 billion parameter model that learns to imitate the reasoning process of LFMs. This is where ORCA presents its new technique in response to instruction tuning and it's called explanation tuning, the first major contribution from ORCA. Here, not only does the open source model get the prompt and response, but it gets an explanation on the reasoning of how ChatGPT and GPT arrived at an answer. First of all, this thing is only 13 billion parameters, meaning it can run on almost any computer you have at home. This is key because a lot of these open source models that have been releasing require cloud GPUs with somewhere around 48 gigabytes of VRAM to run them. So you're telling me we can have a model on par with ChatGPT that can fit on a laptop. Okay, here's the secret sauce, so pay attention. Orca learns from rich signals from GPT-4, including explanation traces, step-by-step -step thought processes, and other complex instructions guided by teacher assistance from ChatGPT. This is a two-tier teaching process where they take five million examples from ChatGPT, AKA GPT-3.5, boil it down to one million examples, then use GPT-4 to train on more complex examples. This extra step makes it easier for Orca to digest the data as opposed to a direct link from Orca to GPT-4. This is a reflection of curriculum learning or learning easier stuff before the harder stuff. Sounds a lot like humans, right? You don't learn calculus and then learn addition. I'm just saying. So basically, instead of pattern matching and imitation, Orca asks large models for step-by-step -step reasoning on how it achieved its answer and learns from that. Is your mind blown yet? By the way, if you're enjoying this content and want to stay updated on all the latest AI news, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. I wish I had a visual to see how it all works. Oh, never mind. Here's one. This chart represents instruction tuning, where the open source models are just imitating larger LLMs. The user instruction is use the given data to calculate the median. Here it says First, we need to arrange the data in ascending order. Since there are five numbers, the median is in the middle, which is seven. And there you have your basic prompt and response. But this figure represents the new Orca method, which forces GPT to explain, even if it doesn't feel like it. This instruction reads, you are an AI assistant. A user will give you a task. Your job is to complete the task as faithfully as you can while performing the task. Think step by step and justify your steps. Given the data, calculate the median. The response lists a step-by-step -step plan on how it will calculate the median, which is then used to train the open source model. The second big contribution is scaling tasks and instructions. Open source models are using highly limited data sets, 
but Orca uses the FLAN 2022 collection, which is a data set of tasks and instructions put together by Google that has tens of millions of instructions. In this visual, you can see the data set sizes of these different open source models. Alpaca and Vacuna have 50 to 70,000, and WizardLM has the most at 250,000. But as you can see here, Orca has 5 million, completely destroying the other open source models, and it comes through ChatGPT. And then GPT-4 comes through with a second set of more complex tasks and instructions. So the explanation tuning provides actual in-depth reasoning for prompts and responses, and there's such a huge data set now when compared to other open source models. And the third contribution is evaluation. So researchers facilitated an auto-evaluation with GPT-4, meaning GPT-4 ran tests on these models pictured in the graph. And Orca beat ChatGPT, Bard, and any other model foolish enough to think themselves worthy. Also, academic benchmarks like BBH are used in conjunction with academic and professional exams like the SAT, LSAT, and more. And they top it off with safety evaluation. So how does it stack up to other open source models? Orca surpasses instruction tune models like Vicuña 13B by more than 100% in complex zero-shot reasoning benchmarks and 42% on AGI eval. Orca reaches parity with ChatGPT on the BBH benchmark and shows competitive performance in professional and academic exams like the SAT, GRE, LSAT, and etc. as pictured in this graph. So Orca beats Vicuña is on par with ChatGPT and lags behind GPT-4 a tad. Then the paper goes on to drop the bomb statement. Our research indicates, learning from step-by-step -step explanations is a promising direction to improve model capabilities and skills. This means LLM's understanding how something works is much more effective than learning patterns. Sounds a lot like how humans understand things too. I'll just add this as a piece of evidence of humans building consciousness. So basically these system messages are the best way to get ChatGPT4 to explain its methods to open source models. Some examples include, you are a helpful assistant that always provides explanation. Think like you were answering to a five-year-old. You just gotta know how to talk to it. Orca is fantastic, but it still points to the fact of how far ahead GPT-4 is of any other model. The, the thing that is special about OpenAI, and I think the thing that is so misunderstood by that document, aside from the fact that we have like a gigantic number of users and people that like have formed some sort of relationship with us and our products, is what OpenAI is special about is figuring out what comes next. It is, the ability, it is easy to copy something once you know it can be done, and in that sense, sure. Um, it is very hard to go figure out what to do next and the ideas, the big ideas, the medium-sized ideas, the small ideas, and the careful execution on them that it takes to get from here to super intelligence, that's what our mode is. Everyone seems to be copying what the GOAT of AI is doing while the GOAT of AI's goal is to achieve super intelligence. Thanks for watching. Let me know what kind of content you wanna see moving forward and leave your thoughts on this video in the comments below. Click that video on the screen to watch something you haven't seen. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.